Hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. I'm Brie, and today I'm going to be recording another reading vlog. I've been a little absent on this channel for a little bit because May has just been a crazy month. I got married, so I got married on the 28th, and the week before I was like pretty much just go mode for wedding stuff. And then the week after the wedding, I literally could not get out of bed for like four days, four days, five days actually. We got back on Sunday and I ended up basically not being able to do much until Friday. I was able to like get out of bed and stuff. I just like mentally had no energy and then physically for like three of those days could barely get out of bed. I just like drained everything in me with the whole weekend and so I am just now recovering. I tried to sit down and film my March, no, my May wrap up and that did not go well. I feel like I sat through the whole thing and then at the end was like what did I even say did any of that make sense so I didn't do a video for Tuesday and I am just gonna get back into it this week so a lot of things in my house have been neglected and a lot of things in like YouTube and vlogging and things like that have been a little neglected for me because I just like have been in wedding mode and so I'm hoping this can be like kind of a reset of sorts and I am going to be picking up some comfort books to like help me get through it. So the first I'm going to be reading is I had picked up from the library um, volume two and three. Got to remember how we do these. <laughs> volume two and three of Fiona of the Dawn. I read volume one last month, which you'll see in my wrap up, but I really liked it. And I also have a reading vlog of me reading it. And so I went and picked these up, which was funny because they were doing a whole like reorganization of the manga there and so I was like asking the lady I was like do you have any Yon of the Dawn she's like we should there's like 35 volumes I was like yeah but I didn't see any and they were reshelving them so she went and got them for me which was really nice but I was like oh my gosh this must be popular all 35 volumes are gone they weren't but I have heard it's a popular series so all that rambling to say picked up two and three and I hope to read these probably today actually I'm feeling like getting into this and then I was thinking a middle grade is in order. This is Ava Evergreen, Summer Magical Witch. I thought this would be a really good summer book and it's nice and warm outside. I'm needing something cozy. I've been doing a lot of mystery, which I always love, but I thought just something too, not too serious that I can just dive into. And this was really calling out to me. So I've been so excited to read it since I picked it up. This is by Julie Abe and it's basically about this witch who's turning 13 and she wants to go from apprentice to novice witch otherwise I think she loses her magic so it's basically her just trying to prove herself to her family and everything because her mom is a really powerful witch but she has only like a little bit like a pinch of magic so she's trying to just prove that she can do it and I don't know exactly what adventure she's gonna go on but I think it's gonna be like a coming of age story and I've heard Gavin from uh, How to Train Your Gavin really enjoys this book and so I'm excited to pick it up it looks so cute perfect like for what I need right now so those are what I'm going to be reading. I'm going to do that. I'm going to film my May wrap up, which you'll see before this one. And then I'm going to read and I'm going to work on some blog and work stuff because I'm really behind on all those. So yeah, I will take you along as I do all that. And I hope that you enjoy and leave a comment down below what you're reading this week. I'd love to hear your reads for this now that it's like kind of officially summer, at least in the U.S. Midwest area. So yeah. I will take you along. Sir, you're so cute. Yeah. You're so cute. But I'm going to have to record a video. I do. I need to record a video. Okay, well, I'm going to go do something and then I'll come back. And I've got my always helpful Pippi. Yeah. You always help the mama, huh? <laughs> yeah. He is like my little shadow. He's waiting for me to sit down right there so that he can join. Isn't that right, Pippi? Isn't that right? 
hello welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm brie and today's video is going to be my may wrap up the fall is coming i can feel it the breeze brings goosebumps to my skin So I've been having a day, uh, let me tell you. Excuse the uh, pile of laundry that's over there that I have yet to deal with. Uh, I So this morning, before I filmed the first clip, I went out to the car because Noah was leaving and I was going to go get some Starbucks because we ran out of like things to make at here, at home, at here. Um, and we go to the car and I'm getting in my car and Noah's like, oh, did you like go in my car? I was like, no. So I go over there and there was stuff all over the front seat. Someone had broken into his car because he must have accidentally left it unlocked. And there's been like break-ins, I guess, in the area. No nothing was taken because we didn't really have anything valuable in there. But yeah, we just like stuff all over the car. So we had to clean that up. So then I went to go to Starbucks and I also didn't sleep very well last night. Like I was woken up a lot. So then I was like, okay. And I was thinking in my head, what if I get to Starbucks and they don't have my refresher because that's what I get and I was like it would just be like a day <laughs> and then I get there and they're like oh we're out of lemonade so I couldn't even switch my order because I can't drink coffee right now um to like a iced tea lemonade so I was like okay so then I went I was like well I'll go try a different Starbucks but then I got lost on the way to the other Starbucks because my sense of direction is crap so then I finally got there got my drink came home everything was fine. I was like, okay, it like, things aren't off to a great start, but whatever, it'll turn around. And then I had to call for my prescription because the last time I went, I get three months at a time. The last time I went, it was like, uh, they put it in wrong. So they said I could only get a month filled and I was leaving out of town. So I just was like, okay. And I got it. Um, and I was like, I'll deal with it later. And so then I had to send them to it. So I just went out to go get it. And first I tried to record like a really cool, like I was trying to be more artsy and then there were people like right outside my door. So I ran into them as I'm trying to film. It was very awkward. But then I go and they said it won't be ready yet, which is like fine, but I need to take it. So, um, so I was like, okay, whatever, like 2.30, it's like 12 o'clock. So then I'm like, I'll just go to the library, drop off my book like I was going to. I got, oh, by the way, I got lost on the way to CVS <laughs> to go get my prescription and went completely the wrong direction because sense of direction again. So I was already like, ugh. So when I got there and that happened, I was like, okay, it's fine. We'll just go drop off our book. So then I'm driving on the way there and I saw Goodwill, hence the bag. And I was like, you know what? I need some serotonin today. So, no, I need some dopamine today. So I went in because I'd never been into that one before and I got some stuff and it was like, pretty good but then you know, do you ever have those days where like every interaction is like painful like I just feel like I'm like painfully awkward today and like can't keep it together um and that happened there and then there was a change fiasco and I just not really sure what happened with it but I left and I was like I feel like that went poorly so I'm just giving you a lot of information you probably don't care about all that to say is like the day is not going how I planned <laughs> at all 
but that's okay. We're going to turn it around and let me show you what I got so that you can have some dopamine too if this gives you dopamine. I don't know if it does. Anyway. So I found, um, this is a Nancy Drew. It's like an old copy of Nancy Drew and I have one more up on my mantelpiece and I just saw it and was like, I like old books and I like Nancy Drew. So I picked this one up because it's only like a dollar or two. Then I saw this one and I was like, you know what? It sounds cute. It's called Arsenic and Old Books. It's a cat in the stacks mystery and it's like a librarian in Mississippi and he has a coon cat, a man coon cat named Diesel. And yeah, don't really know what to expect there, but I thought it was cute. And I was like, you know what? It's got a cat that looks like my cat a little bit, except for my cat's not a man coon. So I don't know why I think it looks like my cat. But if you look at the picture, it kind of looks like Kaladin. So I got it. Then I found a Monet book and I feel like my coffee table I never feel like I de it's decorated the way I want it and I always want like coffee table books but coffee table books are so expensive even at half price books they're like 20 bucks so I found this one and it was literally only like three dollars and it's just like Monet and I love the his like watercolor I don't know but I like Monet I like the pictures I flipped through it so I was like this would be great for the coffee table but the first one I saw which is what really drew me into that they had like a tiny little coffee table book section it was this English country it's like England's private houses and I love old houses especially like English or French like manor houses and stuff and I was just like oh I have to I could sit through and like flip through this like all day like if I had a mood board it would be English country like that's my goal in life is to have a house like but not maybe not like you know full manor but just I just love the, all the details and stuff so I got this so these two are gonna be coffee table books on this coffee table because that's where you put them because they're coffee table books so those I was like I can't leave that and then I was like well let me just go look at the other section and I didn't really look at a lot because I don't need anything really but then I saw I always look at picture frames um and I found this and I really actually, it's upside down. I really actually like the picture. So I don't know if you can see, but it's like a boat in front of these like older homes. And I don't know, I just really liked it. And I like the frame a lot too. So I was like, if eventually I don't want it, the frame is like pretty nice, nice wooden frame. So I got it, it was $5. And I think I have a place in my bedroom where I'm gonna put it because I have this like circle um, art piece that I got from an art fair a long time ago, but it's just not really my style anymore And so I kind of was thinking of replacing it with something like this because I like wood or like gold frames And yeah, so I'm really happy about these finds. like I feel like This one was a little like frivolous, but the other stuff I was like are stuff that I kind of been wanting for a long time So yeah, well, I don't know if I've been wanting this, but I've been looking for art prints a lot so that's where I'm at with that. I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna try to get the day back on track. Don't know how it's gonna go. Haven't read it all, so I can't update you there, but I will probably be reading a little bit. I wanna finish editing my video because I started that, but then I thought it's like noon. I should go get my um, medicine before I like start feeling ill later in the day because that usually happens later in the day. And then I couldn't get it, so I might just have Noah pick it up for me on his way home. Anyway, words are hard, thinking's hard, humaning is hard. So I'm gonna go, and I will check back in later.
Well, I was gonna film uh, reels today, but it is very gloomy. It's like about to storm outside, so the lighting is not good. So I think I'm not gonna do that today. But I did go to the library and I picked up some of my holds. I haven't done a holds at this particular library, so I wasn't sure how it worked. So I just went in and then I ended up getting a couple other books. So I thought I'd show you because I have a um, vlog idea that I think I'm gonna do. So that's what kind of prompted it. But then also, actually it was two vlog ideas. And then I just found these other ones. Sorry, words are hard today. So this one isn't a checkout, but they have like a little like book area where you can get books for like a dollar. Um, and then the kids' books are 25 cents. And I like to support the library. And I saw this Jacqueline Winspear and Incomplete Revenge, which is like the fifth book in the Maisie Dobbs series. And I have the first one. I haven't read it yet. But I just kind of thought I sh would pick it up because it supports them and it's a series that I think I'm really going to like and I've heard really good things. So I saw it. It's a great condition and you don't really find hardbacks of these kind of books sometimes. So yeah, I picked it up. So then this is a f fun one. I saw, um, oh gosh, I can't remember her name. Let me look it up. Amy, Amy Marie. She has a YouTube channel. She has a lot of like cozy mystery books and I've been seeing a lot of recommendations from her channel for Cozy Mysteries and she really likes this um, Scottish Bookshop mystery series and this is the first one, The Cracked Spine. I was just by Paige Shelton. I was just going through the aisles and looking for a different book and I saw this and I saw they had the first one so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pick it up because it sounds great. It's about like a woman who moves to Kansas, uh, or sorry, <laughs> a woman from Kansas moves to Scotland. Um, I think just to start over and get like a new life and so she's in Edinburgh and she starts a job at the Crack Spine, which is a bookshop located there. And looks like something occurs that an artifact goes missing that causes this mystery. I haven't read too much into it, but I've just heard that there's, um, that it's a great series. Why are words so hard today? It's been this whole week, like last week and this week. My brain, it's just, my mouth is not catching up to my brain. It's frustrating. <laughs> So I guess I'll start with this one. Um, so I picked up, this was one of my holds, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Goss. I've seen this on um, Meg with Books, Meg, her channel, and she, it's like one of her favorite series, and I've been really intrigued by it. I've had it on my TPR for a while, and her love of it has kind of like gotten me to want to try it, and I think it's about like Jekyll's daughter and someone else. Like I think they're all daughters of different people. So it talks about Sherlock Holmes in here. Dr. Moreau, Frankenstein, things like that. So I think they like solve mysteries. I don't know, but it sounds great. And I am very excited to read that one. And then this one is a middle grade called Aggie Morton Mystery Queen. Um, that's a series. And it, this one's The Body Under the Piano. It's the first one in the series. And I'm excited to do a video. I think I'm going to do a video of uh, comparing some Agatha Christie like retellings and this is one that I've been really wanting to get to and this is just about a girl Aggie and she's supposed to be like Agatha Christie um, and it's in 1902 so that's fun and then her friend what's his name Hector Perro but spelled differently because um, there's Hercule Perot Poirot and so I just think it's gonna be a fun little middle grade that's got a nod to Agatha Christie so I picked this up for that video, which I'm not sure when that'll come out, but I think this month, hopefully, that's because I have it from the library. And then I'm waiting on two other holds from the library. So I have on hold Dial A for Aunties, which I'm really excited to get to. And that will is in transit from a different library, so I don't know when it'll get to me. And then I have, um, uh, it's a historical mystery, Murder at Bre Breckridge. Murder at the breakers a gilded newport mystery so i saw this from um an instagram her instagram is called charlottesville bookworm and her name is janine we have a lot of like in common books and we kind of have messaged a few times and i so i always look at her recommendations for historical mystery and this was one that she was trying so i saw it at the library thought i'd give it a try i don't know if she really recommends it she just i think was reading it and i was like oh it sounds interesting so yeah those are the books i got i still haven't done any real reading I think I read a chapter of the book yesterday. So I think I'm going to actually pick up the Yona the Dawn volume one or volume two and read that and then get to work. Um, so yeah, that's my little check-in. <laughs> Blue 
Well, I finished Fiona the Dawn Volume 2. I think I'm going to give this probably 4.5 stars. There's still some things in here that are just a little bit confusing for me. Uh, I don't know. I think it's some of like the politics or like motivations of people um, that I'm sure will come out later. But sometimes it's just a little confusing like when a scene's happening, like why certain things are being said for me. And I don't know if that's just because I'm new to manga or if it's just a product of the book, but it's nothing that like fully takes me out of the story. It's just I'm not as immersed in it yet as I could be. So that's why I think I'm going to go with 4.5. But I had a good time. I think this one was really nice because the first one is just like launching you into this story. And this one really started to expand on what's happening and the politics of the whole world and what's to come because of the actions of the first book. So I really enjoyed that and I'm excited to see what the third volume does because really like a lot happened in the like last half of the book that like just made things crazy. So I'm really interested to pick up the third one. I don't know if I'll pick it up today or if I'll read the middle grade book. I think I want to read Ava Evergreen, give myself like a little bit of time between these. But yeah, I had a lot of fun and I've actually got a lot of work done today too. So it's been pretty good. The sun came out. It's been like pouring rain and then all of a sudden sunny and then pouring rain. So I was doing some reels in between <laughs> things. But yeah, I'm gonna work a bit more now and then I will probably get back to reading in a little bit. I just finished this while I was eating lunch and I'm gonna get back to it and then I will check back in later when I've read more. Hello. It's the next day and to say I have a problem... Is probably an understatement. If you were wondering, yes, yes, I did go back to the library. I don't know why you would be wondering that, but I did. Um, because my hold for Dialy Ferrantes came. It had to be shipped, I guess, from a different library, so I didn't understand that's how it worked. And um, so I picked it up today, but that meant, you know, going in <laughs> and looking at more books. So I turned in the two mangas, which I'll wrap those up in a second because I realized I didn't wrap up the third one. Um, but I already turned it in. But I saw these two and I thought I'd pick it up. So this one's Full Dark House by Christopher Fowler. So this is the first in the Bryant and May mystery series, also known as the Peculiar Crimes mystery series, which I got the 15th one when I was in Charleston. Yeah. And I didn't realize that it was the 15th. I thought it was the first. So I thought I'd pick this up, give it a try, see if I like it. And I don't think you have to read them in order, but I, I like to start with the first one at least and then maybe continue on and read that 15th one. So that's why I picked that up. Then I picked up Anna Lee Hubert's book, This Side of Murder. This is a Verity Kent mystery series. So I have The Anatomist Daughter, which is a lady, or The Anatomist Wife, which is a Lady Darby mystery. And this is her other series. And I just thought I might read them both and compare them and see which one I like more because I like seeing the like original series they come out with versus like the newer series and which ones are done better, like as they learn more in their careers. So yeah, I'm just gonna have fun with that and I really just wanted to look at books and this is what I came away with. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven library holds. Um, a little out of control, but here we are. <laughs> so um, let's talk about two things. First, let's talk about uh, finishing volume three of Yona of the Dawn. Really enjoyed it. I think it is really starting the adventure part of the story and 
I think I'm still gonna give it 4.5. I think the whole series as a whole is just missing something for me. And I think maybe it's because it moves really quickly. Um, cause we're already like, we have like one step that they needed to get to and now we're already like completed it in the third volume. I think that that's just disappointing for me a little bit. Like it doesn't ruin the story or anything. I just wish it would slow down a tiny bit more, but I really enjoy it. It is giving me Avatar vibes even more now. And I like that. I love Avatar The Last Airbender. I watched the whole series and I had the graphic novels for a little bit, but I don't know what happened to them. I enjoyed it. I returned it. But so far the whole series is a 4.5 for me, so I'm definitely going to continue with that series. Now, let's talk about Ava Evergreen. I am at 100 pages, basically, and so I'm probably like a third of the way through. I'm enjoying it. I think it's fun. It's like definitely coming into her own. So basically, Ava is a apprentice witch, and to become a novice witch, you have to do a quest. Each, like, level of witch has a quest, but if you don't pass your novice witch quest, they take away your magical powers, and her mom is, like, a grandmaster witch, so, like, the highest witch you can be. So she's terrified of losing her powers because she's always dreamed of being a high witch like her mom, and so she ends up going on this quest and is basically, like, if she doesn't pass, she will be done. So it's a very high stakes, but she has a lot of like issues so far coming up, but I can tell that she's going to make some friends and come into her own. So we're really just getting to like the beginning of her quest. She just got to the island because basically your quest, you have to save a town, not save a town, you have to help a town um, with what they need and things like that. And there's different like checkpoints you have to do. And you only have, I think it's like two weeks or something. It says till the next full moon or something. So isn't that two weeks? I don't know. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I think I just got sucked into the manga yesterday. So I definitely want to read this more today and get a decent way through if not all the way but I have some work to do so I don't know how much more I'll read. But this is only 300 well it's 390 no 382 pages. So I have basically 280 pages to read which is doable but I also don't want to like force myself but so far it's cute there's a little animal companion that has been introduced which I always love a good animal companion and it's just a sweet story I would recommend it so far from what I've read I'm really enjoying it if you like like a fantasy adventure story middle grade this is hitting all those points for me for the rest of the story I don't know but I have high hopes so that's my update for that and I'm gonna get to work and I will check back in later I wanted to check in because I finished Ava Evergreen Sem Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. I think I'm gonna give this four and a half stars. I really really liked it. I think it is the perfect like summertime middle grade book. If you're looking for just like a warm-hearted fantasy about a witch just coming into her own magic and things like that. And it is like a magic quest um, though I wouldn't say the it's very high adventure but it's just so sweet. It was perfect for summer. Like this t seaside town is where she's at most of the time. And it just felt very summery to me. Like the author herself is, I believe, Japanese American. And it says she spent uh, her summers living in Japan. So I, you can see that there's like a lot of references kind of to that. And it's just so sweet. It was a really cute story. And I enjoyed the friendships in here. I would say like if you like a very like fast-paced uh, 
adventure story this isn't really it it took about like a, over half the book to really get into like any like more action the rest is just like she is trying to complete her quest but it's a little slower moving but I just thought it was so so cute and well done and I really liked Ava and I definitely want to continue the series I just think it's a very good story about like you have your own magic in a lot of ways so she struggles with having magic so she starts calling herself like semi-magical because she only has like a pinch of magic and it's just about like how that pinch of magic she can still do so many wonderful things with it just because she's not as like powerful as her mom and things like that doesn't mean that she doesn't have her own abilities and so I think it was just a really sweet coming of age story and I definitely will continue the rest and it was perfect for summer so if you were thinking about when to pick this up I would definitely read it during the summertime so I read that and two mangas this week. I'm really happy with that and I think I'm going to end the vlog here. But if you want to subscribe, I would love that. If you want to like this video or anything like that, I would love that. And if you have any recommendations for videos you'd like to see in the future, if you want to leave them in the comments, I would appreciate that. But I will see you next time.